Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 184 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our fourth lesson in the series of 10 on the topic of probability. If you have not watched the number 181, 182, and 183, it is vital, it is crucial, it is essential, it is imperative that you watch those three videos first in order, in order for you to be able to understand what's going on here. There are concepts that we learned in the first two days, 181 and 182, which are going to be applied here. Yesterday on day number 183, we solved the problem. We solved the problem very similar to this problem in, 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 in great detail. And if you have watched yesterday's video, it will make it easier for you to understand this video because obviously we do not have a luxury of going into that much detail every single time. So let's get going. So we have two people, A and B, as, as you can see here, we are told that they work independently. They work independently. Now what does it mean for them to work independently? That word is loaded. It has meaning. What does it mean for them to work independently? Well, that comes from day number 181. I'm going to leave it up to you to understand it yourself. We are told that the odds are 80% that A will succeed. We are told that the odds are 60% that B will succeed. The question simply is, what is the likelihood? What is the likelihood? How likely is it that at least one of them will succeed? How likely is it that at least one of them will succeed? What is the likelihood that at least one of them will succeed? Let's find out, shall we? As we learned yesterday on day number 183, there are three different ways we can approach this problem. There are three different ways. We're going to, we're going to go through all three methods right now. The very first method is a very straightforward method, very simple method, which is which is what you will find in most probability textbooks, where they give you the so-called formula and they ask you to memorize it. We'll look at, we'll look at that method first, which is simply method number one. Method number one, which is simply the odds of either A or B or both happening, the same as the odds of A or B happening. If you lost here why these two are equal, you know, watch the yesterday's video, watch the day before yesterday's video and you will understand it. So it's impo important that you go in sequence. So the odds of either A or B happening or both happening is the same as either odds of A or B happening. And we know that the odds of either A or B happening, A or B or both happening, is simply the odds of A happening plus the odds of B happening minus the odds of A and B happening. Not, not or and A and B happening. So here's here's A, here's B. When we talk about when we talk about the odds when we talk about the odds of A happening, when we talk about the odds of A happening, we're talking about this part right here. And when we talk about so we're talking about this it includes this area here. And when we talk about the odds of B happening, when we talk about the odds of B happening, we're talking about this this area right here in the Venn diagram. And in that case we are including this area. As you, as, as you can clearly see that this, this overlapping area, as you can clearly see, this overlapping area is the pictorial depiction. It is a pictorial depiction, is a depiction with the pictures of a scenario where they may both happen. And that area you can clearly see is counted twice. This area is counted once as a part of the odds of A happening and the same area is counted again as the odds of B happening. Because it is counted twice, we have to subtract it here. We have to subtract one of those quantities so that we don't count it twice, which is the odds of A and B happening, which is right here. So let's finish it up. Odds of A happening, we are told, is 80%, which is 8 out of 10. Odds of B happening, we are told, is 60%, which is 6 out of 10, minus the odds of A happening, which is 8 out of 10, times A and part of B times the odds of B happening, which is this. Again, going from here to here, if this part is giving you trouble, if this part is giving you trouble, this is something we talked about in day number 181 and day number one. Actually, I think this was day number 82. The reason why it is like this is because the events are what is known as mutually exclusive. The events are mutually exclusive. Where can we put it here? Mutually, mutually exclusive. These two events are mutually exclusive. Let me spell it. These are mutually exclusive, and this is something we discussed on day number 182. 
day number 182 we discussed the notion of two events being mutually exclusive anyway let's finish it up so 8 times 6 is 48 so we have we will have 48 so this is 0.8 I'm just going to put it in decimal, it'll be easier. This is 0 0.8, 0 0.6, that is 1.4. 1.4 minus 8 times 6 over 100 is just 0.48. Instead of doing the common denominator and so forth, let's just do it. It's 1.4 minus 0 0.48. 1.4 minus 1.4 minus 0.48. If you want to look at it as 140 minus 48, you can do that too. 140, 140 minus 50, listen very carefully. 140 minus 50 would have been 90. We're not subtracting 50, we're subtracting 48, so it's going to be 92 percent. So that's one way of looking at it. The answer is 92 percent. Now let's look at the same problem with the second method. We'll do it on the top so that we don't have to erase the first method. We can look at the exact same problem a little bit differently. Uh, so this is method number two. Method number two. The odds of A or B happening, A or B or both happening, is same as, is same as, well, what are the odds that either A or B or they may both happen? The question is, what are the odds that at least one of them will succeed? Well, the odds that at least one of them succeed well, that's the same as asking, uh, that's the uh, same as uh, looking at the fact that the scenario where at least one may succeed, at least one may succeed is that either A will succeed and B will fail, or that B will fail, or it is possible that A, uh, B may succeed and A will fail, or there's a possibility that they may both succeed. A and B, they may both succeed. So, so somebody asks us, what are the odds that at least one of them will succeed? Well, at least one of them uh, will succeed. There are three different, three, there are three different uh, ways where it may pan out. At least one of them will succeed. Maybe A will succeed and B will fail. B will succeed and A will fail. Or they may both succeed. Right there. All of this scenario to pick a situation where at least one of them will succeed. This is the odds that at least at least, at least one, at least one succeeds. Let's finish it up, I'm taking too long. The odds of A succeeding is, we are told, what was it, 80% chance was it? Yes, 80% chance. The odds that A will succeed is 80% chance. Odds that B will not succeed. We are told that there is a 60% chance that B will succeed. If B has a 60% chance of being successful, that implies that he has a 40% chance of being unsuccessful. So that part is done. Then the odds that B will succeed is 60%. And, and the odds that A will not succeed. A has an 80% chance of being successful, we are told. Therefore, the odds that A will not succeed is 20%. Plus, odds of Odds of both of them being successful. Odds of both of them being successful is simply the odds of first guy being successful, which is 80%, times the odd of second guy being successful, which is 60%. We we'll do it all out, and hopefully we'll get the same answer as before, which is 92%. Let's find out, shall we? So that gives us 8 times 4, that's a 0.32, plus 6 times 2, which is 0.12, plus 8 times 6, which is 0.48. 48, 12, and 32. Okay, watch what happens. 48, okay, watch, watch my, watch my, uh, follow the stick and uh, follow me. 48 plus 2, 48 plus 2 is 50, 50 plus 10 is 60. So 48 plus 12 is 60, 60 plus 30 is 90, 90 plus 2 is 92. It turns out that we do in fact get, we do in fact get 92%, same as before. So this is another way of looking at the same thing. What are the odds that at least one of them will succeed? Well, there are three different ways at least one of them may succeed. There are three different scenarios where one of them may succeed. One is that A succeeds and B fails. Another one is that 
B succeeds and A fails. And the third scenario, of course, is that they may both succeed. Now, the last possibility where they may both fail, the last part of possibility where they may both fail is something that we will utilize in our third method. So let's look at the third method. We need the room, obviously, so I'm going to erase all of this thing. Just give me one brief second. All right. So this is method number three. We're looking for the part where we're looking for the odds that at least one of them succeeds. What are the odds that at least, at least one succeeds? The odds that at least one succeeds is same as, is same as one minus the odds that neither succeeds. If we take away, if we take away the probability that neither A nor B succeeds, if they both flunk from 1, which is 100%, then whatever is the remainder would have to be the odds that at least one succeeds, because these are the odds that neither succeeds. Well, let's take a look at it. 1 minus neither of them succeed, which is same as the odds of A, odds of A failing, and odds of B failing. Just like just like what were the odds that both A and B succeeds, the odds that both A and B succeed is simply the odds of A succeeding times the odds of B succeeding. See, similarly, the odds that neither succeeds is the same as the odds of A failing times the odds of B failing. Let's take a look at it. That's what it is. Let's finish it up here. We are told that there is an 80% chance that A will succeed. If A has an 80% chance of being successful, if A has an 80% chance of being successful, then he has a 20% chance of being unsuccessful. Similarly, if B has a 60% chance of being successful, if B has a 60% chance of being successful, that implies that he has a 40% chance of being unsuccessful. That's it, we are done. 2 times 4 is 8, so 0.2 times 0.4 is just going to be so this is 1 right here, 1 minus 0.2 times 0.8, which is 1 minus 0.08. 1 minus 0.08, what do you know? 1 minus 0.08 is simply 0.92, which is 92%. Same exact thing. There is a 92% chance if you if you put two people on a project, if you put two people on a project to solve for, to find a solution to a certain problem. And uh, your assessment, your gut feeling, your experience tells you that there is a 80% chance that Mr. A will succeed and there is a 60% chance that Mr. B will succeed and you put the both of them to work on the problem independently in a separate room working on their own, then there is very good chance, over 90% chance, to be exact, 92% chance that one of them will definitely, at least one of them will come out of the room and tell you that yes, he has found a solution. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.